I'll show you that later. <laughs> I'll show you. Hi, everyone. It's uh, Kevin DeWalt here. Uh, today we are doing a uh, Hangout on Air with Hubert, uh, I'm sorry, Hubert Ivaniuk. Did I get that right? Yeah, I did. You have that right. Okay. Uh, Hubert is on uh, So Helpful, So Helpful Me slash Happy Hacker. Is that right? Happy Hacking. Happy hacking, and we'll put that in the notes on the Hangout as well in case anybody wants a good time with them. So Hubert has generously offered to give us 30 minutes of free help, trying to help us do a do some performance analysis on So Helpful. And Hubert is such a freaking awesome guy that he actually took the time to advance a look at New Relic and looked at our app and actually gave us a, a document of a, some advice and way to fix it. Hubert, you freaking, you rock, man. This is amazing. <laughs> I love performance. I, I believe everyone deserves some good performance. So, um, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so, Thank you, Sam. It's, it's okay, part so, of it, of optimizing, you know, like the interaction. Yes, exactly. So uh, so for those of you who can't see what we're going to be doing today, we're going to be actually going through a document, which you probably won't be able to watch live, but uh, we're going to be looking at that as we go through this. And Hubert's going to take us that step by step to give us some advice. He's going to post this document, and you'll be able to look at the video later if you want to go through it uh, face to face, to step by step to look at it. Or even smarter, just schedule some freaking time with the guy, and then you can get help on your app, and you won't have to worry about all the problems with my app, because you're probably a better developer than I am anyway. Okay, so let us let us get going. And now, now that I put you on the screen, of course, I lost Google Drive. And um, let me see, there it is. I got it brought it back up again. Okay, so Hubert, rock and roll, man. Tell us, tell us uh, everything. We're doing bad and good. Okay, now I lost the Google Drive, but I have it again. Okay, so uh, now it's gone. So uh, yeah, first thing is uh, I compiled three top performance improvements that you could make to your website. Okay. Those things are basically a result of the second section, that's the performance analysis. So those three things, three advices, uh, are like compiled version of uh, what follows in a document. You okay. should really, to implement them, you should really read the whole thing, but uh, we'll go through that. So first three things. Uh, I've seen some errors in the asset pipeline. Okay. As in, uh, like, the you don't combine resources. You could use asset pipeline to actually create one JavaScript file. For now, you ship three different JavaScript files. That's jQuery, timeline, and application. You should combine them in one file and load it asynchronously, just at the end before the body. It is later on described how to load it. And uh, you see the link here on uh, using index files of uh, the asset pipeline. So that will tell you how to uh, configure asset pipeline to mold all of those files into one file, minify it and everything. And the second Great. part for asset pipeline is actually not that much of an asset pipeline per se, but it's actually to clean up CSS. Nearly 90% of selectors that you deliver are not used. And uh, to solve that, uh, basically, I've seen the data from uh, running audit in Chrome developer tools. So if you do run audit on Chrome developer tools, you will get that information. That there is like pr probably you will even get the information what kind of selectors are never used. But uh, you should review it because ninety percent of uh, CSS not used is just a waste, right? You shouldn't okay. deliver that to the client. At least it was. I was analyzing the landing page of uh, my profile. So yeah, that which was is the most that important. CSS, yeah. So that, that that wasn't used there. I don't know if you maybe could split CSS to different uh, f for different views, but uh, at least that view really doesn't require that much CSS. Then once you have it cleaned up, you should split CSS into two parts. One part being a cr critical part that is necessary for rendering above the fold. So whatever the device is, yeah. uh, you should HTML should have everything inside of it that is needed to render above the fold. So if, for example, you have like a top bar, that style is always sh should be inlined basically in a head. You okay. have some style that that is like on the left uh, sidebar, that has to be styled also in a head, because that's getting download that's visible straight away. Now you have Next thing are two, three main recommendations. They should be styled as well because they actually fit on the first screen. 
but the rest of it, like additional recommendations, the footer, all of that, yeah. that can be styled later on. That yeah. can be shipped with a separate CSS file, and that CSS file should be loaded after HTML. So we use the standard link uh, with style sheet, but you, uh, you, you put it after HTML. So after you close the HTML, you put it there. It still loads, except it doesn't block any of the rendering. Hey, Hubert, so can I ask um, a quick question? Yeah. Sure. So the so a lot of these CSS and asset pipeline issues, this is not back end. This is front end. Is it browser performance or? This is purely browser. This is purely user perceived performance. Like I looked at your okay. Heroku, yeah, and I haven't seen any problems there. So your response times, like okay, the main profile uh, response is around 250, I guess, milliseconds. That's um, perfectly acceptable. Yeah. You, yeah, okay. you, you have nothing to do there yet. Like, okay. uh, yeah, that, that's just good. So you don't okay. have to worry about that part. The, the only problem is that it takes about five seconds to render the web page, which yeah. uh, with both advice you should get around to one second, I guess. Like, okay. uh, if everything of that is implemented, you, you should be below one second, I think. At least okay. user perceived performance, because if we don't block the rendering, so the the, the last point uh, with the asset pipeline is just a recommendation, not really about the asset pipeline, but how to s structure HTML. So in head, you should never put any external JavaScript before external CSS, because what it does is that browser has to fetch that external JavaScript before it starts rendering anything. Yeah. Like, it already downloaded HTML. It already has all the structure, but it won't display a single thing until it actually fetches the external JavaScript files. Right. So the ordering yeah. of that is really important. If you want to put some JS in the head, you should always put it after CSS. Never before. But you should really not put it there. Be okay. The best. Like, uh, it, but that's uh, later on. That's for uh, JavaScript yeah. optimization. No, this I get. This is great. Well, so two good yeah. things. Good thing is I have done zero work on the browser performance. The only thing I've worked on is back end. So you made me feel a little bit better in this conversation already. <laughs> so oh, and but, 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 you know, you've you've heard of uh, performance golden rule. Yeah. That says basically that there is ninety percent of time of user perceived time is spent in a browser. Unless your app shuts down for 15 minutes at a time because your backend is yeah. too slow, <laughs> which is, which <laughs> that, is what happened but, to me. <laughs> but that's extreme. That's extreme. That's really okay. rare as well. You know, you don't really see that. You fixed it now. You don't see it. It's yeah. not there. <laughs> okay, this is perfect. Yes, and I can tell you right now, I know exactly where a lot of these problems are, and I can tell you the source of the problem. The source of the problem is my JavaScript. Sucks. That's basically the source of the problem. The good news is Joey, who's on the call, has got a lot of JavaScript back, background and done a lot of Java, so I know he's going to quickly going to be able to get through this. And I think what I'm doing, like some of this stuff, like the asset pipeline, um, I, honestly, I couldn't get, I just couldn't get the jQuery working. It's that simple. And so I just yeah. stuck it wherever I could do to get it working. But I think, yeah. but we could move. Like Rails actually has. It, Rails does asset pipeline when you push it to Heroku, but I don't yeah. think it will do it if I have the Java directly in the HTML. I think it has to be in a certain folder for that to work, and a lot of yeah, it's yeah. not there. You 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 have ex that uh, described in uh, this using index files. That's the first link in a link in a document. Yeah. So that one will actually tell you how to handle that situation in the asset pipeline. So you have to create a directory with index file, but that will result in you being able to say that I want an asset and just provide a library name. And asset pipeline will compile it to one file for you. And fingerprint and all the good stuff. Got it. OK, is, cloud, is, cloud front is, usage. Yeah, OK, let's go through cloud front usage, OK. Uh, you have to review it uh, against the Heroku documentation of, uh, like, you have to review your code, because there is something really uh, hairy there, like something is going really wrong, as in like what I see in a browser is that you do reference CloudFront, but yeah. what CloudFront does is it 301s all the resources, all the assets back to your application. It doesn't even do permanent redirect like 302. So every single time user wants a page, it will go first to, the, uh, to your CDN, and then CDN will redirect it to the application. Okay. So 
that's something that uh, I, I looked uh, for, for like a good source of documentation and I found this Heroku documentation yeah. being the best for your situation really. Yeah. On, so you have to review that part of code basically to fix it somehow because okay. that's not what it's uh, that's not yeah. your in in your case CDN is actually hurting your performance okay. Okay. <laughs> but that's uh, that, that's a good thing right because uh, yeah. you know that right. this, this part is here's a manual on how it's supposed to be implemented Perfect. you just review yeah. your code with it and yeah just get it fixed okay yeah and Hubert how do you like what are the tools you use to figure this out? Because I went through that and I thought I did it right, um, and then like I didn't get an error out of Heroku. Like, what are you looking at to figure this out? So it will be handled in. Uh, I will describe the process in uh, performance analysis part. Okay. We will go a bit faster with that, but uh, I use three tools really. First okay. is developer uh, developer tools from Chrome with uh, yeah. Speed Insights extension. Uh, then I use uh, Speed Insights. Uh, page speed insights uh, of Google by itself as a standalone tool, and web perf no web page test. Those are the three tools that I always use when I uh, assess performance. Oh man, Hubert, you you rock! This is freaking awesome. Okay, so so the CloudFront, you really yeah. and to validate it, it, you look at the network tab of developer tools. You will okay. see there that you get the redirects, so you're not shipping the content from CloudFront. But you will see just a redirect through one is going to be yellow, I think, or something like that. It will stand out. And then you will later on try to, to, you will get it from your application. OK. So the last thing is caching and compression. So basically leveraging the HTTP as a transport lever, a la yeah. layer more efficiently, using it more efficiently. So ship less and uh, make it cacheable. So uh, for now, browsers don't cache your your resources at all. Uh, I've uh, I've put a link uh, here. Uh, yep. Where to find like? There's a whole point on the performance analysis about uh, yep. caching static content. There is a lot of information there. We will go through that. Hopefully, we will have enough time for it. Uh, I was also thinking of. I didn't understand why exactly you're using HTTPS uh, all over the place. Because why I was thinking of it? Because HTTPS is uncacheable by any proxies, so there is no pro way for proxy to cache your content really. So if you ship via HTTPS, there is no one in the middle between server and the client. Where like there can be like SOX proxies, but they won't be able to analyze the content. Therefore, they cannot cache it anyhow. So if you would drop HTTPS then proxies could cache your content as well. So if someone is uh, using a network provider that offers them a transparent proxy, they would be actually fetching your content from the network provider proxy and not even from, not even from your CDN. So you would move edge locations to their network uh, providers. Because that's, that's, a, that's a often a practice that network providers provide some kind of uh, proxies. OK. <clears throat> we'll have to take a closer look at it, because the reason I did that is um, and when I started looking around at splitting the application up between HTTPS and HTTP, it seems like it's more and more of common practice for people to just do the whole thing in HTTPS because the performance isn't that different. And the other thing about the application is that most of the people, they don't, they, you know, they're basically what's the most important thing we do? The most important thing we do is show your profile and let people book a call. Like that's basically it. So people don't, it's not the application usage right now isn't something where people come back you know, repeatedly to the same page over and over and over again. Well, I mean, then it'd be booking, like, all, you'd have one guy booking all your calls, which would be very, very good. Um, so I don't, I guess that's when we'll have to go through and look at the, look at it, look a little more closely. I, I, mean, I guess we'll probably do that one last, but But, but, but it's though. not a necessity. It, it's okay. just, uh, as I said, consider dropping it. It's right. not okay. a, a necessary improvement. Like, once you implement the rest of it, like, uh, compressing it, making it cacheable by browsers, yeah. then, uh, You'll, you'll see basically whether you're at the performance level that you're happy with already, or you yeah. still want some more performance improvement. Okay, perfect. But that's just to consider. It's not, it's not a requirement. Proxies are yeah. not uh, really something that you have in control, so it, it would be better, but you might uh, just drop it as well, like uh, okay. as not Great. even think much about it. Then you should zip HTML, CSS, and JS. Basically, all the text content should be zipped. So uh, you should ship it compressed. 
Okay. And that's also described in a performance analysis in the enable compression. That doesn't the and asset think, pipeline do that? I thought the Rails did that. Like a Rails, if you put in their little asset pipeline, it will compress everything automatically. And uh, it will minify. Asset pipeline will only minify. It can also produce uh, uh, zipped versions for CDNs, but okay. you have to configure it well to for it to actually know the fact that it is producing zipped version as well. There has to be okay. a proper value header. Header, but uh, by def the easiest is actually to use rag deflator. But we will talk about it in the first point of okay. performance analysis. Okay, great. Because that so performance analysis. Uh, each section here that you will see contains three parts. Why the, this performance improvement is important? What resources it applies to, or what resources are affected, and how to fix it? Okay. So so. First, I use the PageSpeed Insights. Uh, you asked for the tools that I used. Yeah. And, uh, so basically, PageSpeed Insights, you just go provide your URL, and you get the get that information. I don't, unfortunately, I didn't include it here, but OK. So enable, enable compression. Uh, it is marked by Google as should fix both for mobile version of your site and for desktop. OK. As like uh, it's actually going in a red for them which is not good. Like the, Google doesn't want to send much traffic to slow websites. So okay. that might, uh, fi fixing those issues, even if you have acceptable user performance, you might consider fixing those things just to make Google SEO. a bit happier yep. about, uh, exactly. Yep. So uh, to reduce it, like what well, you can save basically with just zipping the content uh, up to more than 600 Ks per uh, page load. Okay. Which, which is actually 77% of your uh, page, which uh, is a lot. Basically, yep. it's like you're reducing to one third all, all the download, which is a lot. Mm. Okay. So, and, and it, it should be very straightforward. Like in a section how I described here with the rug deflator, because, because you're running on Heroku, uh, you have no Nginx or Apache, but normally that, that is the layer that would handle compression. But since you don't have that and there is no option really having that in Heroku, then uh, you have to use Rag Deflator. And uh, yeah, there is some configuration snippet uh, for config rule. It's okay. really straightforward to use it, Got right? It. It's just use Rag Deflator and that's it. And then you run your application with that enabled. Uh, that advice was based on uh, Stack Overflow. It always rocks, right? When you find okay. something on Stack Overflow, you know, like, OK, it's right. solved. It's per right, right. It's on the internet. It's gotta be right. right. <laughs> I, I was trying to make uh, the advice like uh, really for you. So knowing that you run uh, on Heroku and what kind yeah. of tools you're using uh, to actually have your solutions tailored to to your situation. Super so the more. next thing. This is great. Great. Okay. <laughs> so the next thing that uh, Google advised to fix, both for mobile and for desktop, is minify CSS. Yeah. And uh, it is not only to zip it but to actually strip it, to clean up, like trim it, yeah? to remove yeah. all the unnecessary white space and this kind of stuff, that will save about 40%. And really? wow. that's okay. like another 100K. Another 100K, and if you then minimize it with zip, uh, if you then compress it, it will be even less. So uh, it's, uh, there is, again, some network uh, traffic to be saved here. And you see in how section there is like a very straightforward uh, configuration for asset pipeline. Yeah. But uh, you just allow compression and make sure that the uh, CSS compressor is YUI because that's the gem that ships with uh, the asset pipeline. So you don't have to add any dependencies like for JavaScript, yeah. for example. Okay. You, might, you might need uh, for minimalization, uh, you might need to add some additional uh, gems for it. But for mm -hmm. CSS, it's all all included. Great. And what is U U Y U I? Yeah, Y U I. Y U I is a uh, that's something from Yahoo, but okay. that's basically library that is able to compress, uh, like minimize mi minimize your CSS and JS. Okay. So it will strip white spaces and uh, do some fancy stuff with it, so it takes less space. <coughs> that's basically okay, it's a component to minimize minimize it. The third advice that uh, 
sh you should fix if you target mobile and should consider fixing for desktop. But uh, that's the one that actually makes the biggest change from, from what I've seen so far. It's not as easy to implement as the rest. It actually will take some coding, but that's the one that makes the pages load instantly. Okay. So that's uh, eliminating render blocking JavaScript and CSS. That's what we talked uh, at the beginning of actually yeah. splitting okay. CSS into two parts, combining JavaScript in one file and loading it a asynchronously. But what that does is that basic, what that does is when you download, when the user downloads your page, it already has everything that it needs to have to be displayed. So yeah. after fetch, you already have a first draw, which is going to be extremely fast. So you might fetch later on additional JavaScript resources to provide some additional behavior and additional style to style below default content. But after loading HTML, you should be able to see everything already with uh, that advice implemented. Okay. So removing, uh, so first, removing render blocking JavaScript. So combine jQuery, time zone, and application into like all JS, for example, or you name it however you like. But yeah. make one file of it, make one resource out of it with asset pipeline. Okay, and then so I guess what, some of the some of the things that we'll have to test here is like the time zone one. When somebody visits your profile, we detect their time zone automatically before they go click on the schedule a call. Yeah, I have been wanting to figure out a way to do that, basically to the, and we store that in a cookie. Like once they click on, the, I do that. I like to be able to click on the button, then go get that, and then store it, and then render like the call information. Um, I just yeah. didn't know how to do it, so and I could only get it working in the header of the page, so that's why it ended up there. So, but it sounds like it sounds oh, but, like but if, you, if it is only ahead. working in a header, you could provide like a minimal version of it, so you wouldn't okay. have to have all of it. Like you know, you can easily interact with cookies uh, without jQuery. Uh, yeah. You have now host that knows JavaScript, so it 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 is not uh, you know very hard to interact with cookies. Okay. Uh, you you don't need jQuery for it, so uh, you can do that part if it really needs to be in head. You can really inline it, but do that after CSS. So okay. first you have all the style that is necessary for it. Well, that's so, okay. So that's really easy. Then that's just a two second change, right? I mean, yeah. Then remove okay. jQuery and time zone from head. Okay. You should not load those heavy resources unless you really need to. But uh, from what I've seen in the application, like even if the button really requires something, uh, you could actually wait for it. After the call saying like, okay, we're calculating something, I don't know, like before displaying, for example, the, the booking, right? Like right. booking options. Uh, you could wait there uh, for it. So uh, you have to figure it out how to avoid this heavy loading of JavaScript before anything gets rendered. Yeah, okay. It should be doable. From my experiments on the local machine, like, I don't know whether the whole page was really functional, but it behaved like it. It looked like it. <laughs> so, okay, uh, right, yeah. And then you load all of it asynchronously just before closing the body. So I assumed, you, like, I, I showed you some snippet here. Yeah. That's, that doesn't assume any library or anything. It just, uh, you know, if it loads it on load. So if document is loaded, meaning like it's finished already, then we're going to fetch the JS asynchronously. Yeah, so we okay. will add the element and uh, fetch it, and then on load, we will actually, because you have some initial, initialization there, like uh, yeah. tool yeah. tipper and uh, drop down toggle, right? Those yeah. things uh, were yeah, part of the initialization. So yeah, that's some that of those can things are some, yeah? some of those things I don't even know for you. We may not even be using some of those things anymore. So that might be the easiest, like delete button. It might be the easiest. <laughs> easiest oh, that's option. the best solution. That's, that's <laughs> right. the best solution ever. Yeah. I, yeah, I wouldn't honestly, dare to do that on your website. Yeah, honestly, just, I just don't know. Honestly, I just don't know jQuery and JavaScript that well. That was the biggest issue. So, and, and you know, as we've had different people working on this, they've gotten they've gotten their page, their part of, but no one's taken a a bigger picture look at this and so but this is really helpful because now at least I got okay now I know where to start I know how to and I know why which is fantastic um, great excellent okay and for CSS delivery as I mentioned already yeah. clean up the CSS because there is like a lot of rules not used so you can save a lot of space there 
and also uh, not, not really redesign, just make sure that you have only those that you need or uh, that you expect that you need uh, for like because I guess that uh, the detection didn't took into account things like on Hoover and stuff like that because it's yeah. not able to analyze like it it analyzes the state of the page. So it is not able to say like, oh, there is an event triggered when someone does something and then the style is applied. So okay. it's really up to you to, to figure out which part is really necessary for you. But uh, you will get that information in audit of uh, Chrome developer tools. Then, right. uh, and so let me, let me ask that Hubert. So we're using Bootstrap as our framework. Um, mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I could start ripping out components of Bootstrap, but that would be... Then I don't know what I'm going to break in future upgrades. So we, you know, we like most people, we end up putting the whole the whole Bootstrap framework in there and then customizing as necessary. Um, mm -hmm. do, practically speaking, when people build an app, do they actually go in and like rip out parts of Bootstrap, or do they only render what they need? We don't actually use Bootstrap on the profiles page much at all. So I could I could yeah. not, not have it serve on certain pages, but that seems like it would be even more complicated. Well, I I don't think that people very often will go actually to the CSS and clean it up when they use so, such a frameworks. But okay. uh, what what you could do is to figure out this critical path CSS, inline it, and then load the rest of CSS from CDN afterwards, after okay. the body you has right. rendered already. So you don't have to clean up everything. You just have to know that, okay, there is like, I don't know, 100 or 50 styles that are needed for above right. the fold rendering. Yeah. Just inline them in a head. So once the HTML is loaded, the styles for to render above the fold are there. Google loves it. Yeah, and you know what? Well. The, the profile show page, which is like 99% of our traffic, um, which is that you profile basically, that one doesn't use. That one has its own CSS, and so we could probably just if we got rid of Bootstrap for that page, that would probably take care of 90 because we don't really we don't really want. You know, the rest of the stuff is hardly used, right? What's most no. important is somebody comes to your profile and loads quickly. No, that's... Exactly. It's, okay, mm. great. This is it. So, okay, so, good. Yeah. So when uh, load the remaining CSS after HTML, just a normal link uh, declara declaration after closing HTML. It works on all the browsers. It just doesn't bro block rendering anyhow. Okay. So right. uh, you, you fetch like in a background CSS, and it gets applied for all the below the below the fold content. Now, all right. I just went to a cat. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. Sure. We look, just looked at the. I just looked at web page test, and we got a we got a F for cache static content. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and that's the that's the CDN that's the CDN issue, right? Basically, and also yes. not using any. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's okay. what, what they don't even uh, recognize as uh, it's not only CDN. It's uh, they, they uh, web page test doesn't recognize as you use CDN because what yeah, your okay. CDN does is just redirect to the application. So they fetch the assets from application, and that's where they say uh, those assets live. So they don't okay. even you see there is X in uh, for your for your page. Yeah. on the CDN usage. So they didn't okay. recognize CDN there. But uh, the ca caching is basically saying that browsers nor proxies can cache your uh, content. So there was okay. like score 6 out of 100 there, I guess. So that, that, that's, that was the biggest, bo biggest pain according to web page test. And that was something that was also suggested by, by web uh, page speed insights of Google. Okay. So what to do there? Like I didn't include the list of things that uh, list of files that were affected by it, but uh, you have it accessible. There is a link in a document. Yep. So that's quite a list. Uh, you should basically implement the best practice uh, of optimizing caching. Uh, that's okay. really clearly described by Google. You have a yep. link here. And you have like what it really is in a nutshell. But uh, you have to use cache control public. Uh, so proxies could cache it, but since you're using HTTPS, proxies cannot cache it. But in case of Firefox, mm -hmm. I don't know how many users your users are using Firefox, but Firefox, any assets that are shipped over SSL and don't have a 
cash control public will never even consider uh, caching them. So it will never land in a local cache for Firefox. Okay. Firefox is uh, actually for caching is a bit problematic apparently. Yeah. Uh, then the second thing is uh, to add expires to minimum of one month and maximum of one year. More mm -hmm. than one year is uh, invalid, is uh, violating RFC, so you should have it in between. But you use the fingerprinting of uh, asset pipeline, okay. so uh, you should be able to set it to one year because every single time you have a new version of a resource, you will actually have a new fingerprint. Okay, great. So uh, you can actually have all the all the assets uh, with a maximum possible uh, cacheable time. Great. Okay. Uh, then then last modified. So mm -hmm. expires and last modified together combination uh, is the thing that works on most of the browsers because there are some other ways like with cache control and max age, but that's not as widely used as a combination of expires and last modified. That's the one that will give you the most uh, results on all the browsers. Uh, then the vary header. I haven't uh, taken a look at uh, if, if you're using it or not, but I know that there are problems with it in IE. So if okay. that header, so if you have IE users and your vary header has something more of an accept encoding or user agent, then it will not cache it. Okay. So uh, yeah, that's, that's another caching instruction that Basically, you have to restrict yourself only to those two or just strip the whole thing out, yeah. uh, if you have any. Okay. Uh, and then configure fingerprinting uh, to make the hash be the first part of the file name and yeah. not the last part. That's, again, bug in Firefox local caching, but they actually take only eight uh, characters into account, eight first characters into account. Okay. So strange, but that's what it is. So if you have uh, application name, like application and then fingerprint, then it won't cache it properly. You might get uh, hash collisions on it. Yeah. Even though your whole fingerprint is changing, application is enough and uh, it, it will collide on it. So that's pretty much it. That's the an analysis. And uh, the next step, I would like you to take time of how long it takes you to implement it. I'm really curious uh, whether this advice is uh, detailed enough to actually know exactly what to do or you had to research at all, a lot and uh, you know which, which where you were missing some uh, documentation on it. Then when you deploy those changes, I would really appreciate if you would annotate that in Google Analytics. Yeah. And then tell me how did it change your traffic and conversion okay. rate. Because yeah. uh, it's like we've heard that from Google, from Amazon, that yeah, performance is extremely important for them. But I never worked for them, and I never really worked for anyone who could uh, put a finger on those performance changing, saying like, yeah, that's the effect that it had on my conversion rate. You know, going from like five seconds to one second, that actually doubled my conversion rate, or it didn't affect it at all. I don't know. So uh, I know that yeah. people it should improve your traffic because organic search uh, should drive more traffic because of better speed. But I would like to see how it uh, really affects it. Yeah, I, I, I can I can definitely track like how long it takes. I think measuring the business value for so helpful is kind of is kind of hard because typically what happens is like let's just say somebody wants help from you on performance testing, which I would recommend to anyone is an extremely, extremely good idea because this is awesome. So if somebody comes to your profile, they're like, let's use me as an instance. So an entrepreneur's got a problem. Like, you know, oh my God, I'm ready to kill my co-founder, right? They're, they're not going to like, they're not going to abandon my page because it takes an extra second or two to load, right? They're going to, they want help. So they'll wait an extra second to get that help. Um, so I don't know if we will notice it uh, just because we're still so new, we'll notice an immediate business value, but um, but I think we can measure it in absolute terms, and I'm quite positive now that we're starting to grow and the traffic that's starting to pick up a lot that this is going to be very important. Um, so I have absolutely, and, and even if look, even if it only like marginally helped performance, a lot of this stuff is just basic, like even organizing the app and making the app easier to read. Like the JavaScript, the, the jQuery files and put it in it, but like a lot of that, it's just a mess right now. And so now I've got a good reason to go, 
a good reason why we need to go clean it up sooner than probably I was planning. Oh, but that also should, uh, shouldn't be that uh, much of work, really, to fix those things. Uh, the, the only tricky thing, really, is, the, as, as I think, is CSS, uh, critical path CSS. Yeah, the CSS the stuff... Yeah, that yeah, might be tricky. That might be tricky, but I think I think there's some really low-hanging fruit. Like the CDN thing, I had no idea. I, I set it up. I thought I did it right, um, and I and I just like okay, well, I'm on the CDN, and I looked at web page test. I'm like, huh? Well, web page test must be wrong because I know I did it right. <laughs> so it's like, it wasn't yeah. me, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, great, Hubert. This is just this is fantastic stuff. Um, I got it, man. I think I think we, Joey. Do you have any questions? Do you have anything you want to ask him or? Uh, not, none at the moment. I, I have, you know, a lot of things that I need to digest. Also, you know, you're you're adding to my work, but this is gonna be helpful. <laughs> yeah, and I'd say I get. I think I get probably. I think I get all the concepts that you're talking about here. Yeah. It's just a matter of I have to go in and actually like look through it and think through it, but. I mean, at a first pass, Hubert, this is this is incredibly helpful. But you just, I think, it's like a lot of times. I find that I, I don't really know where to start. Like, I don't know what questions to ask, and I don't know, like, I don't know what I don't know. So, getting to this point, like, this is three weeks of research right here. So, to me, to understand what you've just gotten us right now, because you've basically said, uh, like, here are the smoking guns. And that is hugely, yeah. hugely valuable. Um, so yeah. this is, I mean, so from our perspective, this is awesome. So I, I guess I'm curious to see, you know, can you tell us a little bit more, like, about you and what you're going to be working on and, like, how you're, you know, like, what you're doing with your business and how you're going to be helping people? Because, I mean, you've obviously, you, you've obviously know what you're doing here. So just can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and what you're going to be working on? Uh, so I'm creating a uh, service now uh, called Performance Wow. <laughs> Okay. But uh, but is uh, for now it's two layered uh, service. First is uh, to have alerting and configuration. So I will maintain uh, your application configuration and alerting regarding performance. But uh, that ships with uh, New Relic. Uh, it's quite affordable. Uh, it's not that that much more expensive than uh, okay. New Relic by itself. And then there is additional package on top of it that's uh, incident handling package. So if you have performance problems, I can help you with it. So uh, I will run analysis for you saying what were the root causes for it, okay. how many users were affected, how they were affected, and how to fix it. So Got that's uh, kind of similar as uh, what we've just seen with performance teardown where we had analysis of uh, what happened. Uh, in all the cases here, all the users were affected, unfortunately. It yeah. wasn't like selective uh, situation. But So that wasn't mentioned anywhere. And also it had the how to fix it part. Okay, great. Which I believe uh, is actually the most important, the most value for, uh, for, for users of that, uh, of that service. To great. actually so get actionable advice on how to fix the problem. It doesn't matter that much. Uh, why it happened, uh, it's, uh, there is a problem. You want a solution, right? So right. there is a yep. reasoning for the solution included, but solution is actually a fix of it. Great. So um, so the, 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 the part of it that will go through and figure out, like, here's the root cause of the problem, will that be, like, uh, like will that be, like, software doing that or be, like, human-powered software? How will it, like, how are you thinking about it? How will it all, is it an application or a service, or is it both? It's a service. Service, it's, okay. Uh, for now, so I, I'm a software developer for yeah. a lot of time, but uh, this business is a service. It's not a okay. software service. Yeah. So it, uh, it, it is a, just a normal service that I apply my skills to, but uh, yeah. I try to create uh, working procedures for it so I can grow the company. So it uh, yeah. won't hit the limit of my capacity, and that's yeah. it. Uh, but for now, I'm taking it slow. I have two Perfect. clients now. I'm looking yeah. for the next one to enroll the next one to slowly create those procedures and make sure that uh, all the cases are covered, really, of yeah. how to interact in a situation, how to, uh, that, that I have a knowledge-based build-up of uh, 
how to handle those incidents in a very efficient way. Yeah. So users are always happy with it. So I'm growing it slow, like uh, someone called it some time ago, like uh, hard and stupid way. And I really enjoy that. No. Yeah, no, I, yes, <laughs> because exactly. I get a lot of contact with people and yes, I see totally. exactly what, what are the pain points, what is providing the value, where they are happy with. Oh, and, uh, perfect. Yep. Hubert, it's, an it. awesome, it's an awesome idea, Hubert. And the, the thing I love about the approach you're taking is that you can slowly build automation into this as you go, right? Yep. And you can, you can build like tools to make you more efficient. And you can, you can, I mean, it's total concierge, right? I mean, like, you, it's, it's like the, I don't know if you've seen the food on the table case study is just fantastic. Um, so in terms of, like, um, like it, doing things uh, aside from fantastic calls, it's, uh, calls like this, I think to get the word out, are you going to be, like, doing any blogging, writing, newsletters, anything like that as well? I've, I've got some suggestions if you'd like them, but... Um, yes, I would like some. I'm, I'm trying to build a blog on it, but uh, yeah, I'm more concentrated really on those clients now yeah, than uh, taking the work out because I I intend to grow it slow for now. Yeah. I don't uh, want a lot of. Uh, I don't. I don't need a lot of clients now because I wouldn't be able to handle them now. Right. So I'm I, since I want to grow slow. Yeah, I understand the power of marketing and I. I Put some effort on it, but it's not the top priority for me yet to yeah. to build the audience and uh, and I want to understand well what is the value that uh, is really needed there. What Perfect. what is the value to be provided and how to do that? Great. Yeah, make that makes total sense. Okay. Right. Well, that sounds like you're doing it right. So I mean, could you even like could you even just like spend some time on Hacker News or anytime anybody posts something on performance, just put them they have to say, hey guys, if you have a question here, just let me, you know, I'm yeah. happy to help you talk you through it or whatever. I mean, I would think that it would be pretty easy for you to just reach out to people and say, hey, you know, what, what you know, like just like you did with me. Um, I mean, I realize you won't be able to spend this much time with everyone, so thank you. I feel special. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> oh, I, I could probably set up some alerts for Hacker News. I, do, I usually don't spend their time because it's like a you know time hole, like a, yeah. a drain. But it just uh, it's it's like Twitter. You know, it, it's too much time when you read it. So uh, I don't uh, I I tend not to spend any time there. But I can try to set up some alerting for it because yeah, the the Hacker News community yeah I, it's it's the it's pretty much the target audience. Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, for for me, so it would be smart to actually set up some alerts where to figure out if there's something about performance, some questions. Yeah, I'm quite sure. I mean, because I think a lot of people. Here's what I've observed: there's a lot of people, sort of like, especially with everybody, you know, you know, people like me who are just sort of like hack my way through a developer, right? So I'm, you know, I'm like a lean startup. I'm doing, I'm doing a business. So I'm building the app. I'm verified in the market. So I wasn't worried about performance at all last year. My my question was. Is anybody going to pay for this? Like, does anybody care? Yeah. Well, yeah. we're growing now, right? Like, you know, we grew about forty percent in January, so we're actually things are picking up. So now it's like, I got to start worrying about stuff. Like, <laughs> now is the time. <laughs> so I think there's like there's probably a lot of people who are in my situation where, like, whoa, I woke up and I suddenly got. I, I now I don't have to worry. I, now I need to worry about this, and especially if you're able to. If you're able to just so, so 37 signals, uh, I think when there's a story, and I don't know, I could have to Google and find the link, but I heard that when they first started with their consulting and their product work, they actually started writing blog posts where they would go out and find like high-profile companies and write about like how their application was built and what they could have done differently, and yeah. uh, and that got them a lot of press because it was like a high-profile. So you could just take some high-profile sites like this is yeah. what so and so site could be doing to be ten times faster and just like yeah. do a quick analysis, especially because you can get it all off the, the public internet. So that's that would be one way. Yeah. The, other, the other suggestion, um, and I, this kind of depends on how you like to work, um, but if you Dave Hefner is also on uh, so helpful. It's uh, so helpful me slash tour to Dave, and I can send this to you afterwards. He Thank does you. the yeah he does the um, it's the Selenium Elemental Selenium newsletter. So his like he does testing and selenium testing. So it's kind of like your thing where, you know, like, like performance testing isn't the sexy thing, right? But it turns no. out there's like a lot of people who like there are people who really really care about this and it's important to them. And like you know they, they like they're a CEO. Like the founder may not give a crap about jQuery CSS, but he sure 
who understands my site is slow, right? They get that yeah. in a heartbeat. No, Everyone gets that. <laughs> Everyone gets that, right? You don't have to like twist their arms. So there are people, and they yeah. still don't really know where to start. So he just started doing a weekly newsletter called Elemental Selenium, where he would just, and it's really short what he does, but he has like, here's your question, here's your problem, here's how you solve it, and he just puts those out. And now he's got a book out which I bought, which was fantastic. Right? So he's really building an audience. And the nice thing when it's a newsletter like that is, relative to a blog, you get. Uh, you get much more engagement, and it's much, much better for selling. Like if you decide you want yeah. to write your own book, if you're going to do a workshop, a webinar, you know, whatever it is, it'll be a, a lot better. So you'll get a lot more response than you will blogging. So, um, I, any look, I, any of those things could work, but the fact that you're spending more time on client work makes perfect sense to me. Um, that's yeah. a good problem to have. <laughs> yeah. So, so, Hubert, this is fantastic, and I'm going to tweet out like hell all this fantastic, uh, fantastic advice you've given us. Um, I really, really, really appreciate this. So, once again, where um, people can find you at so helpful me slash happy hacking. So helpful me, so helpful me slash happy hacking, and your blog is happyhacking.nl. Is that right? Yeah, it's not a blog yet. But okay. I, don't I, uh, I don't have uh, like it's not on the top priority. So sure. yeah, for now, it just says contact me. So don't link to it because uh, it's just embarrassment. <laughs> okay. You know. So what, what, what's what's the best way for people to reach you then? Um. Uh, the the best is uh, yeah. If if they want to reach me, go to so helpful me profile. Okay. Perfect. Well, even you better, better, right? Look. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. I'm open for. Uh, I, I would really appreciate any kind of. Uh, I, I like talking performance. I like helping people. So if you have any performance problems, just go ahead there. Wow, that's and great. Once so I have, uh, once I have a blog, we can uh, update the post later on and uh, like link to it once I set it up. Yeah, I'm working on it, but I told you it's not a top priority at the moment. All right, well, so do you want me to put this on my blog? Like, here's what we went over. I can put the recorded video up there, and then so actually, you know, we sure. can probably kill the kill the broadcast. Now we're going to be boring yep. anybody watching this. So, um, Hubert, thank you so much. Uh, Joey, thanks so much for joining us. Any any yeah. uh, final questions, Joey? Or are you pretty much good? Oh, just just so that you know, for well, you you killed the recording, but for reference, yeah, no, we're still re we're audio. still recording. We're still recording. Oh. I yeah, so I can kill it any second. But um, no, no. For the reference of the audience, uh, do you also do performance testing for mobile applications aside from web applications? Uh, not that much, but the, okay. the the standard tools do that already. So like PageSpeed Insights okay. measures the mobile performance as well. And that's okay. what I use. Like uh, I don't use any dedicated testing for like uh, you know Chrome integration to actually see performance on the mobile device. But if that would be necessary, yeah, it's doable. Okay. So, so Hubert, every once in a while I talk to an entrepreneur and I'm like, man, this person is in the right business for them. And I guarantee you, this is the right business <laughs> for you. You are going to kill it. I would bet on you in an absolute heartbeat. You clearly care about this, and it's a big problem. And you know what else? Like other people don't want to work on it. So it's <laughs> this is like this is an economist dream, right? You know, it's like it's like demand without supply. So this is fantastic. <laughs> You are going to kill it. You're, you're awesome. Thank you so much for your help. Well, let's hang on and chat for a minute then afterwards. Okay, yep. thanks a lot. Appreciate Good everybody watching. Help. Thanks Bye. a lot, Hubert. Bye-bye.